Hey, welcome back to Code Reviews. So last time we got our spring backend running on Docker. And today what we're going to do is talk about something that's been going on, but I don't think I've mentioned explicitly, which is how we're setting up the repo. I like to use mono repos for a number of reasons. A mono repo is simply putting all of your code in one repository, GitHub, or uh, Google has famously done it. I've found building lots of different things that if you have code that is works together with other code, it's, it's just best to keep it in one place and to use good organization and separation of duties, uh, single responsibility coding, those type of fundamental frameworks to keep the code ordered, but in one place. What we have so far is just a spring backend, and I've set that up here, spring backend. In the new branch that I've pushed called monorepo management, I have added an Angular front end. What many people will do is have one repo that's just front end code, and then they'll have one repo that's just back end code. That's normal, it's standard. People will break out things further. Sometimes, if you have microservices, each little microservice can be its own its own repo. What I've chosen to do is to have the Angular front end here and the Spring back end here all in one repository. The reason I like to do this is simply because I mirror and I try and keep the code I use consistent. And by keeping it consistent, I can reuse code and I can run things the same way. And it's very easy to understand how the code base works because once you understand the back end, the front end works very similarly. There are a number of files that I've changed. Most of them, though, are just boilerplate code. The number of files is pretty high, 29. Uh, but a lot of them were just generated through Angular when I created the app. To get started... I am in the top level of the repository and I will log into the Angular front end. <clears throat> and I'll run the Angular command ng serve, which is what will build and, and start the app. ng is the, AM, the AWS or Angular CLI and it has a shortcut. So it says, okay, the app is running on localhost 4200. You click that and uh oh, just like last time, it's not loading. This is what happened when we tried to load our API. The issue is the same, can't provide a secure connection. So we're kind of stuck here. Uh, so we need to run on HTTPS. Fortunately, this is pretty easy to do, is provide ng serve, SSL is true. You have to provide the SSL cert, which was generated when we generated all those files in the uh, HTTPS video and the key, which was also provided. So the server key and the server cert, which we already had. So now, once you've toggled that on, now it's running on HTTPS, and it opens. That's perfect, that's what we want. Everything's working. This isn't talking to our backend yet, but what we've done is gotten the Angular application stood up, it's part of the repo, and we can use it. So, let's look at the actual code and see how we got there. The first thing you'll see is the git ignore. We've, we have one repository. It has a bunch of Java code. Now it has a bunch of TypeScript code. What we had to do, obviously, was add a number of additional types of files and directories that we want to ignore. I basically just unioned the JavaScript, the Java one I had, with the one I got from Angular. So we've increased the number of git ignore files. I did update the make file a little bit. Before I had, oh, just backend directory. Uh, but I think I'm gonna, in the end, do many different types of backends. So Next.js is another type of backend that's very popular and I plan to do. So I just added spring backend to differentiate it from other types of backends that I'll create later. The editor config, this is just a configuration file that makes sure whoever clones the repo and contributes back is using the same editor configurations. I didn't change anything, it came with Angular. The readme 
came with Angular, it has some information. I will leave it like this before I update it. Um, the angular.json file, again, this is all Angular boilerplate that comes when you create the app. We might have to tweak this later, but for now, the purposes of this video, we'll leave it as is. All right, so now we start to get into the juicier bits. You know by now that I like to have these ENV or these bin shortcut scripts. And what I did was I created, obviously, you know, before we had just a spring backend and in the spring backend we had a bin directory. And there was a lot of code there because all it was, all this repo had was just a backend. But once I added the front end, there's a whole nother code the Angular front end, which also has its own bin directory. So again, I like to stay consistent. I like things to be mirrored. So you understand when you're in the Angular directory, it's the same layout as the Spring directory. But because Spring and Angular do very similar things, I actually needed a top level bin. Okay, so in this top level directory, I have set default values for the variables associated with SSL and HTTPS so they can be imported in the front end and the back end. As you've seen, the front end needs to reference these files. The back end needs to reference these files. Therefore, I have to create them at the top level and then I copy them down. When you look through the code, you'll see, we'll start at that top, <coughs> that top level, excuse me. And we'll come back to the Angular specific ones. So, package lock, don't need that anymore. The package.json came with Angular, we're using 17. The app component, don't need that. The SCCS, doesn't need that. The spec, these are all Angular app stuff that we'll get to later, but for now we'll just leave what was automatically generated. We'll go deeper into Angular next video. App.config, roots, get keep, fav icon, index.html, the main.ts. SCSS, TSS config app.json. None of these we need to change. We can all mark these as reviewed. All right. So here we are at the top level bin.env. So let's open this in the, with front end code, I like to use VS code. Um, and so since this is mostly Angular stuff, we'll look here. I have set out all of the default values for variables associated with SSL and HTTPS so I can import them in other places. So these are locations, these are names, these are all default values that are used in the SSL enable local host script. This script used to be in the spring backend code and I used to keep all the files in that spring backend directory. But once I added Angular and Angular needed to read those codes, it didn't make a lot of sense to have Angular go look in the Spring directory for SSL files. If SSL files are generic to the entire repo, why would we put them just in the Spring backend? It doesn't make a lot of sense. So I moved the code out of Spring backend to the top level of the repo. The docs are the same. The options are the same. Um, but it uses all those default names. So if you want to control the names, you have to update them in the ENV, or you can override them here. But the first thing that it does is it creates new directories that you need. So all of the SSL files are stored at the top level. So those nine files that we generated that were in the back end are now at the same level as the Angular front end and the Spring back end. We don't commit these to GitHub because that's bad and you shouldn't do that but they are generated and they're put here. And then we create the backend directory if we need it, which is still key store. And then we create a front end directory. So Angular front end, SSL assets, we put in the server cert and the server key that we need. So we make sure those directories are the same. We delete all the files in the directory. So if there are already files there, we can clear them out and start from scratch. And then we go through the same process we did before, generating all the files. The only thing that we really changed was at the end, we copy the P12 file from the SSL top level directory into the resources directory 
that it needs to be for Spring to find it. And then we copy the default certificate file and the default server key file to the Angular repo so that when we run Angular, like I showed you with SSL enabled, it reads these from there. So that was the first major thing that we did was take all the shared variables, I pulled everything out that the front end and back end used, and we put it here. We also moved all of our shared functions that they use. So like we have a, a shared function, which is file to check. This checks, given a location to check and a file type, it will look and see if that file type exists in the location. If it doesn't, it'll print this error message. So oftentimes when I give you scripts, I'll make sure that the file is there before we try and run the code. And if it's not there, it'll print a helpful message to, to deal with it. There's a required program check. So you give it a program to check and then an error message. If the program's not installed, then it will spit something out and say, hey, you need to install this first, again, with a helpful message. And then the last one that we use across both the front end and the back end and any other directories we create is delete all files in directory check. Um, so this will delete all the files given a directory. So you give it this directory and it'll remove all the files there. We just I just showed you we use this when we generate the SSL stuff because we will ask if you want to delete the files in the three directories that we end up copying to so we don't overwrite, we just clear it out. So that's kind of how we work with the mono repo is we abstract everything out and we're able to share and import this ENV into the other ENVs down the line so that everything is made available. So that was the ENV file and then the enable localhost HTTPS that was that file as well. So you have the spring backend we had to make some changes here what you'll see is now we have the ENV script directory level 01 as opposed to 00 and we import that top level ENV file so everything we export from the top is available down here. We have a shared missing file message because we call that in multiple scripts so we just write the message here and everything else we pulled out and we move this SSL file check to that top level so that Angular could use it too. Before we had put too much stuff in with the back end where we actually needed these functions for the front end too. So we had to move them up a level so the front end imports it and the back end imports it. And then I, I can do, I, I can, I don't have to duplicate code and I can leverage stuff I've already done. So we remove this one. If you look in some of the startup scripts for backend, all I had to do was replace SSL file check with file to check and then give it the uh, default SSL key store directory. So check that directory, check for this file type and use this message if it's missing. I do the same thing when I run it as a Docker container, which is why I needed all this to be shared. So that's good too. Easy peasy. All right. So back to the top, the last thing I want to discuss is the, um, the local start startup scripts run for the angular front end. So like I said, uh, we have an angular front end and it mirrors what we've done before. So there's a bin directory in that bin directory. We have another env file which imports the top level one. That's all it does. And then we have local startup scripts. In this particular startup script, it'll run the Angular front end app locally over HTTPS, which is exactly what, what we had done manually. It does a few things that will help you though. So we've set up the CRT file type and the key file type. So you're looking for a dot cert CRT and a dot key. And then you have a missing file message, which is basically just saying, we didn't find this file. It's not going to work if you don't have it. So if we make this certs and we save it, we can go here. So if we try and run this, it says checking to make sure there is a dot certs file in this location. It says we didn't find the file without this file. HTTPS will not be enabled when you try to open the app locally. So it's telling you you know what to do and you can run this script if you don't have it. If 
you want to run it anyway, you can. And it's still going to work because it was just the check that I changed. But you could also have just stopped. So we do a couple things to help you out in this script, which is check for the files you need. And if you don't have those files, it tells you where to run the, the code. So we do two file checks. And then we do three required program checks. So when I downloaded this from Angular, I used the setting up a local environment and workspace. And ultimately, what you need is Node.js, which they link to, but I will also link to. Their link's bad, my link is not. So I will change just the node is. And when you run this, it says node as could not be found. You'll need to install it. And this does bring you to the downloader. You would, you, so you need node. You also need NPM, the node package manager. And so we have a required program check there. And I've also linked uh, to NPM. And then you need to download ng, which is the Angular CLI. And when I generated all those files, I simply installed the Angular CLI using this command. And then I created ng new Angular front end app. And it generated that app with all the files and all the front end stuff. And from there, I just followed the instructions, which is run ng serve. Now, when they say ng serve, they don't give you the SSL stuff. I added that myself. And when I realized I needed that, it's when I created a run script. So it checks for the files you need for SSL. It checks for the programs that you need. And then it runs the Angular CLI serve dash SSL true, provides the cert, provides the key. When you run it, now it, it looks for everything. It tells you what it's doing. It's building. It's running. Boom. We're good. Yeah. That was an intro into mono repos, kind of why I'd set things up the way that I did, why I think they're valuable, how we're reorganizing code to make sure things are dry and we're able to reuse things. And now we have a front end. The next step is in the next video to integrate the back end. So have our front end Angular read from our back end APIs and put that on the screen. Hope you found this helpful. See you next time.